Good day everybody, it's me, it's me Mika Valaria. I'm here to do another video for the Mika channel. So yes, you know I got 100 subs, thanks a lot. But uh, yeah, bad news, I won't do a 100 sub celebration video. I'll just say thank you to you guys instead. Considering that it's kind of, doing all, it's almost at 110 subscribers, I'll just uh, make 110 subscribers and I'll just cancel the 100 subs video. Yeah, and uh, I already had an idea about a house tour celebration. That will be for 1k subs, not 100 subs. So, yeah, anyways, let's uh, begin the shooting. So, if you're wondering, uh, that the cold, let's say, room is that lights off. So, what is keeping uh, uh, this video like uh, there's tons of light? Well, I have a ring light because that's for how this uh, cam, that's how there's light in this room. So yes, let's review the first season of Camp C. I'm in Camp Cretaceous. So let's give you a background on the show. So Camp Cretaceous is a show that is actually a part of the Jurassic World. Yeah, yeah, it's an animated cartoon. It's already on Netflix. Uh, there's already two seasons now. It covered to 16 episodes. So the see, so you see the plot for the show is a group of the teens are stuck are at camp and excited when the Dominus Rex attack. They must all work together as a team to make sure they survive and make sure they're not get eaten by Toro or the Indominus or the Raptors. So that's the plot for season one. Season two, uh, that video probably next week or I don't know. Yeah, anyways, let's review the season. So let's start off with the good. So the season, um, I like the characters a lot. Yeah, mainly the show's main protagonist, Darius. Uh, he's a really interesting character. Uh, I like his motivation for going to Jurassic World is because for his dad, who, who passed away, which, yeah. It's kind of sad, but, yeah, it's a fictional world, so, yeah. Anyways, um, is this me, or when the opening began, it kind of shocked me that, that the, the whole, let's say, scene was actually a video game. Yeah, it kind of shocked, kind of shocked me. It's not, like, a bad thing. It's uh, more of, like, a good thing. So, anyways, let's move on to Kenji. Now, he's the first character I actually disliked in the group because he's kind of cocky and... Like always, like, oh, kind of self-centered. Yeah, he just kind of cares about himself. Doesn't care, really care about the area. He's kind of mean to him and the Ben. But um, when the season, like, see, go, went forward, Kenji became a much better character and a much more likable person. Yes, he still has a cocky personality, but at least he's gotten better. Brooklyn, uh, she's the social media girl who loves doing videos. She's kind of relatable, so that's why she's one of my favorite characters. And when it's revealed in episode three that uh, she's now dropping followers, it's kind. Of, yeah, you kind of feel one of ba kind of feel bad for this girl. Um, so that's um end up for the first three main characters. Let's move on to the other side here, other main characters. Uh, let's start off with Sammy, which in episode three she got so annoying. Like, you know, when she talked to Yasmin for the first time, I was like, oh, man, this girl is trying to stop talking. But um, once the season came forward after she revealed that she was a spy, I think she became a much better character. I keep saying this because uh, every time when this, the first three episodes, they, uh, the characters were not so great, but when in danger, they became much better characters, much more human, much more not so stereotypes. Yeah, that's the one thing I like about the show is that uh, they began off with the kids like, feeling so obnoxious to the uh, audience and then became much better. Okay, so we got the two left. Uh, we got Ben, which is... Uh, one of my favorite characters in the show, he's kind of relatable for me because he, he's like a timid cat person. I know he was kind of annoying a bit, but yeah, overall, I think Ben's the really good character. I mean, the first time I saw this kid, I was like, oh man, I'm not going to like this guy. But, but uh, before he, he fell off the monorail, he, he became a much good, better character. For Yes, yeah, she's the track star of the team. She's not annoying at all. She, she I kind of felt bad for her when uh, Sammy was kind of annoying her in the third episode, but uh, yeah. Yeah, she also, yeah, before the whole episodes were in danger now, I kind of liked Yas before the Indominus Rex attacked. Unlike Kenji, which I liked him when the Indominus Rex attacked. So, anyways, we're done with the main characters. There are other side characters, too, like David Roxy, which will just push to the side, considering they're just uh, camp counselors. They only show up a few times in the season after the Indominus, around the Indominus Rex attack. They only show up a few times. Yeah, in season two, they're nowhere present at all, so that's a spoiler warning for you guys. Yes, I'll put a spoiler warning. I'll put a, it's a spoiler review, so please do not watch this. 
if you haven't seen the first season of Camp Fiction. I repeat, this has been a Netflix for one year now. So let's move on to the dinosaurs. And this season, I love the dinosaurs in this season. They're pretty well designed. Uh, I love the Indominus Rex. She kind of tears everything down. She kills a lot of people. And she kills those two innocent men, which I didn't really like, the concerning one that called the kids dumb. And she also killed the, the bad Eddie. Yeah, on his birthday. Yeah, that was a pretty freaky kill. I think it's much better than how than some of the season two kills. Yeah, we also see let's say I like how their show connects with Jurassic World, especially when the dead and when the dead uh, and Kalosaurus showed up and next uh Bumpy came out of nowhere and also the when Wasani's chopper fell down and next the Tyrannodons escaped. Yeah, that, those are pretty like say good call good things that they did with the show so that they'll keep it like in the nature of Jurassic World. Yeah, I also like Bumpy this season. She's got, she's very cute. The first introduction to her. And next um, yeah, she, yeah, you um, you see after episode two, she became much bigger. Which um, I don't have too much of a problem with. I mean, some YouTubers uh, made an issue that Bumpy, well, growing so fast was a bit over the top. Yeah, it's kind of over the top, but yeah, it wasn't really much of an issue for me. So I like Bumpy as a character. Yeah, she's one of my favorite characters in the show. Definitely the best dinosaur in the show. The Tyrannodons are also pretty well done, and I like the design much better than the Jurassic World design. I wonder where's Dimorphodons? Because Dimorphodons were in Jurassic World, yet they were not in the show. Yet they didn't appear in Fallen Kingdom. Did, I, did they migrate somewhere? Um, oh, what the heck? I don't get it. So let's uh, move on to Toro the Hard Horse. And Con and Toro was a really great antagonist for the season. Yeah, in the movie Dinosaur, he was the the Carnotaurus of the antagonist. I never saw that movie, but yeah, I heard that he was the main antagonist. Here in the show, Toro got the, lots of screen time a lot. Although I didn't like his screen time in Fallen Kingdom, I love his appearance in the season. Yeah, I kind of was disappointed that he didn't make any kill. Yeah, this is actually the lead scene instead of Eddie being killed by the Carnotaurus. By the Indominus Rex, he was supposed to get killed by Toro. Yeah, I think if they let that in, that'd be good. But yeah, I think they only left Indominus asked to kill him because, you know, more screen time with this girl, so yeah. I'm still wondering uh, if Toro's a boy or a girl. Uh, I mean, the kids mentioned that he's a boy, and in Jurassic Park, they said all dinosaurs are girls, so is he a boy or a girl? I don't get it because. Because that Kenji called him Toro, which is a bit of a boy's name, and all dinosaurs are. A girl, so I don't know who, if Toro's a girl or a boy. Also, I'm wondering what the what Toro and the Indominus were talking about the, at the end of the episode four. So that's what, all my thoughts and the other dinosaurs that are appearing in the movie and in the series. I will talk about the other ones like Compi or Stegosaurus because they only made a cameo in the show. So now. Now let's talk about the now I like the music in the show. I like the music, especially the part where um where when Ben was about to fall off the monorail or the part where Darius and Kenji were even. I think that those scenes were have great music. And especially the zipline scene in episode one, which is great. I also like the flashbacks to Darius' dad before he died. It is really heartwarming flashbacks for a dad and son before you know, one that didn't make it out. <laughs> so that's all um, the good stuff out of the way. Let's do it to the negative stuff. Now, there's a whole, there's not really too much I dislike about the season. I actually kind of prefer this over Jurassic World. Yeah, there's one thing I don't like is that the, the camp counselors go off and leave the kids behind. Now, I get it, it makes sense because they're trying to contact Blair, but yeah, I think if they left Dave behind them, they just let Roxy go to meet out with Claire. I think that would have been better. But I guess it's just for a plot device so that we can move the episodes forward. I also didn't like how the kids, when the kids fell down, they're magically okay and that none of them have a broken bone. Yeah, the first time these kids fell off that uh, zip line thing in episode one, yeah, which uh, comes to episode four. Yeah, when they fell off the observation tower, yeah, yeah, when they came back alive and did felt kind of realis realistic. Yeah, just for more plot armor. I mean, yes, they did this in the other movies where the kids make out alive, like when Tim got shot when he came out alive in the first Jurassic Park. But yeah, in this uh, season, they kind of do it a few times, which I didn't kind of like. 
Um, for me, when Ben survived, I think it was a bit of a good idea and a bad idea. For a good idea, I like this character. For a bad idea, I think it's a bit unrealistic considering if you fall off that giant monorail for a ton of height, yeah, you would die, right? But for Ben, I think he's so lucky that he actually kind of survived. So let's talk about the other stuff. Uh, I, I'm not gonna. Before I didn't really like the spy element with Sammy spying for Manticorp, but when I rewatched the season again, uh, I think they kind of like the subplot, so that they kind of count a lot. I think it's uh, kind of better now. So sometimes the comedies not always work. Like sometimes Kenji's jokes don't land. Sometimes the kids' lines not really that great. So overall, this season was great, but not really great. It's like low grade. So I get a season of 8 out of 10. Like Jurassic World, they also got an 8. Yeah, let's wait out for season 2. Thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you next time. Oh, I forgot to mention that Tora got blew up, which um, was a pretty cool explosion, and the climax in the final episode was great, too. Anyways, now we're done with the review. Bye, guys.